Hi, I'm Nate. I'm Noah. And welcome to another Talking Lion Chat. We just put out our new single balance with our longtime friend Miet Hope, who just had an episode of Talking Lion, but we wanted to talk to her today specifically about balance. We actually wrote it two years ago and we almost abandoned it. So it's really cool that it's finally out. And we've also known Miet for six years now. So it's really the culmination of our longtime friendship that this song exists. So without further ado, this is Talking Lion. Hey. Hey. Hello, hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's, it's funny. This is uh, coming out the Sunday after like our actual Talking Lion episode. So it's a week apart, but it's actually like months apart since we actually did that back when we could all be in the same room yeah. in space. I know. I wish that I had known that at the time because I think I would have savored the experience a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there, there's plenty of stuff that like, you know, we all kind of took for granted. I just miss bars and people and normal life. You could go it? to Wisconsin. Uh, t- uh, no, not going <laughs> to do it. Not going to. You know what I miss? I miss those tiny umbrellas that they put in cocktails. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could probably buy those on Amazon. I don't know if that counts it's as an essential good. It's not the same. It's, not the same. it's, it's, not like, the, it's same. like the time we bought fortune cookies. Like it was cool to have fortune cookies, but then it's like, it's not the same as like having it at a restaurant. Yeah, and there's also something about eating like a hundred fortune cookies <laughs> in, in the span of a month that like really takes the, the the joy out of the experience. If anything, scarcity is like, you know, h- how you really know, you know, what, what you care about. Yeah, but, I um, feel like you've cursed your fortunes by eating yeah, them so it's often. too much fortune. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's cool about this too is that, uh, and I was thinking about this, I think you're the first person to have two Talking Lion episodes. Oh wow! You're the first, you're the first returning returning guest. So well, I'm honored. A, uh, well, and if it, if it was going to be anybody, it would be you. You know, it makes sense. We we go we go way back, as people now are aware of with the episode that just came out. I guess it would make sense for me to be a reoccurring member of this show since I played a small hand in the birthing <laughs> of yeah. Sleeping Lion. Hey, I'd say I'd say more more than a small hand. I think that that like kind of first year and like the drive to just sort of make something of ourselves has like like started. I think started a fire for both of us that like led to you know where where we where we are, and which I think is really cool. Um, and I think what's really nice is that balance is this like culmination of essentially six years of of being friends, like six years of collaborating and, and rooting for each other and making songs. But likewise, what's interesting is that on that last podcast, like we talked about balance, but we didn't necessarily think about putting it out and like it being like a like a like our next song. Oh, yeah, it was just like, remember when we wrote that song? Like that was cool mm-hmm. that we wrote a song. And then this quarantine happened and, and we sort of revisited everything. It's just interesting how like, you know, you have this plan and not to, not, not to like plug the, the, the record you know, but like you have a plan and then you make different plans, but like, yeah, you have this plan and then all of a sudden it just sort of shifts. Yeah. Well, and I think it's a special song. I'm really glad that you guys just went back and listened because I know you both have been doing a ton of sessions in general over the past, you know, year or two since you moved out there. And I think I don't know, there was there's probably like a lot to choose from. So I'm glad that you guys went back to it and and remembered <laughs> that it's a great well, I, song. I think it's a great I think, song. I think it is one of those things where it's like, because we wind up going through like all these sessions, like we never necessarily, like the, there are plenty of like really special songs that because you're sort of in the in the moment of it, or you're sort of just like trying to figure out what the appropriate home for it would be, you know, it winds up just sort of like sitting on, on a hard drive. And I feel like that was something that I always see that as such like a loss. Like I see that as such a, like a kind of heartbreaking thing, which is why like I'm glad that this song's been re- reignited. Uh, I was I was thinking back to like the session that we did it. You you were visiting LA uh, with your friend, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my friend Kirsten and I had road tripped, I think, to LA from Colorado, and so we were just kind of floating around, staying at with different friends in town. And I was trying to balance sessions and other creative work and um, 
just like vacationing in general. But I was like, hey, I'm here in LA and there's a ton of music people here. So I'm definitely going to try and I think it was probably one of my first writing trips, actually, like or like my first trip where I was like, OK, I'm here and I'm going to make the most out of my decision to travel here and like also work. We we had just moved to the Echo Park house. And I, I had just moved to L.A. proper. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it was it was like. I think my first like week or so, like, cause there was nothing in this. There was nothing in, in the apartment. apartment. No, yeah. yeah. There's, it was just a keyboard in a room. Well, there was also like and a mattress on the floor. There was a, there was a king sized mattress downstairs that was left by the landlord that we didn't know how to get rid of and didn't know what to do with. Right. And, and we I needed think, a place to crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it like worked out perfectly, but also, yeah, that I think the, what ultimately became the balance session. I think we started at like midnight Oh yeah, yeah we started we started super late. Yeah, I remember because I had my friend come cuz you know we were traveling together and she needed a place to stay too and we were planning on making music, but I feel like I I don't know if we had planned to do it so late. Maybe we were just hanging out. I think we were just hanging out. Yeah, then, I, think, I, I don't think we like formally were like we're going to write cuz we were sort of like well we're if, if we're in the same spot we're going to write and then we wound up like as we do just like hanging out more than necessarily doing the music stuff. So when we were eventually like, oh, we should probably write. It was like midnight. Yeah, I remember because (laughs) the vocals on the original demo, I was like, wow, why do these sound like this? And I was like, oh, wait, (laughs) I recorded those at four in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I was listening, I was listening back to the voice memos. And what seems like so interesting is that I think that like really all we had at first was just like you were looking for balance. Like the you open up the first voice memo and that's, the first thing you hear is, You've been looking for balance. Been looking for love. Been on the break of the habits. When And then that's all we really have. But it's it was cool to sort of see, because we at this point had such like a kind of, we such a collaborative chemistry and we were all very comfortable with each other that you don't really hear a lot of like the, um, like the gears, like screeching, you know, you, you, it was sort of turned into this snowball of like, you had a melody idea. Like I had a melody idea, like Noah had a melody idea. And then here's the lyrics and here's like, it, it, it sort of came together really naturally. I felt. I like, I used to never have to think about it. Like, think about I used it. to never have to think about it. Yeah. Is that ever, like, like if I ever Keep went, it really big what about like, if I ever went too far? Yeah. Yeah. If I ever went too far, now I was like, uh, now I like, used to never. I was like, I used to never have to think about it. Yeah. I never worried if I went too far. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Worried if, I, if it went too far, but now I wonder. But now, say, now I. Yeah, but 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 now but now I wonder. Yeah. Now I wonder. Now I wonder what extent my actions. Extent doesn't sound great at all. Now I wonder what extent my actions were saying, but like you know what I'm saying. But now I wonder like the consequences. Now I wonder about the consequences. Yeah. Now I think about the consequences. Now, now I wonder what. Now I wonder what the consequence. Yeah. What the consequence is. Is yeah. Consequences. We can do better now. Yeah. I'm not knowing where we are. Yeah, I felt like it was definitely a really natural kind of back and forth flow. There's that part where you were like um, in, in the voice memo where. We were talking about like the pre-chorus. Oh, I always say it's all or nothing. You got a problem with the way I go all in. Got a problem. You got a problem with the way I go all in. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like we can make it clearer, I think. Like, I was saying all in because that's like a sort of extreme way of going in. But I guess it, you almost say it in like the all or nothing sense. Anyway, like, so it's redundant. Like, I uh, say it's all got a problem with the way I. You got a problem with the way I lose my head. Yeah. 
when I dive head first into something, something. Or back out instead. Like the, the reverse. Like I dive head, I lose my head. Uh, the way I lose my head when I dive head first into something or run away instead. Yeah. Or. You kind of come with the way I lose my head. So da 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 instead. Oh, so. Uh, or I'll run the other way. Uh, sorry. Or I'll up and run. Yeah. Or I'll up and run the other way instead. Like you hear it kind of happening in real time. The sparks clicking, yeah. Oh, that's always that's always really, I don't know, really fun. Also, what I didn't remember necessarily until listening back to the voice we had this like folky jam too. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, we totally. I do remember that we like sang our hearts out. <laughs> We are just, yeah, it was like, it had to have been like three in the morning. Yeah. But. Did we even write anything or were we just like? No, you're we were just. no there words, we were just yelling. Just, yeah, it was like vocalizing. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. The guitar was like slightly out of tune. It was like, like really twangy. That was actually really special. It felt really spiritual, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that because we were just like, we had just written a great song and it was like in the middle of the night. And for some reason we just. And we were being so loud too. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, we just decided to like, yeah. Hey, nobody sleeps in our house anyway, so yeah. it, it was a uh, it was par for the course. But that was really really special because I feel like so much of our time at school together was just like jamming. Yeah, and it had been a while since I'd done that because I was like starting to really kind of songwrite professionally. So like sessions had started to feel like you know work. Um, yeah. And not in a negative way, but just like, this is my job. This is my profession. Yeah. And I just like took it more seriously, I guess. And it was cool to just have a moment where it's like, oh, we love music and like playing chords and singing is just like what it's all about. So we're going to do that. And it just like feels really good to do this right now. <laughs> and, and that was what was so nice about the balance session too, was just because of the fact that we were so comfortable and so like and have been friends for so long, it wasn't a high pressure session. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, we need to make something or we need to write. Like we knew if we got something great and if we didn't, there would be plenty more times that we could write together and hang together, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why, I, I don't know, I feel like so much of the song feels really authentic because we didn't have to think mm. too much about it. We weren't worried or-, or I think it's cause, partially because we were so tired. There, oh, was, there, yeah. there was no room to overthink <laughs> or like get too cerebral about it. Cause we were just like, it was late at night. We'd smoked some weed. We were just like hanging out, vibing. It was just this very, and there's, you know, there's no distractions. It was just a keyboard in a room and some speakers literally in the yeah, middle of the any, room. Yeah, we didn't have any, we didn't have the couch, <laughs> we didn't have a desk or couch. We just had a keyboard in a room. Yeah. And a mattress, a random mattress. And a random mattress. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, it wasn't a space set with an intention to, an intention for anything, really. It was just like, we are going to, write and see what happens and like there was no pressure and that kind of like made room for the authenticity of the song to shine through i also like too that there were there was like a level of like experimentation or just like a level of like appreciation for certain melodies like i like i know that we were jumping between two different melodies for the sort of rising section and the pre and instead of like being, well, this one's better, this one's better, or like, let's have both in there. We're like, okay, well, the first pre will have, the way I lose my head. and then the second one will have, the way I lose my head. it was nice to like be able to save melodies that we liked, you know? Yeah. Wait, we, you guys be down to go like full emotional song with like, like, oh, maybe the second one. 
second time around because it's really pretty. Maybe not the first time because we don't want to give up the. Uh... I liked that too, and that's actually. It was a really like nice and friendly compromise without feeling like any of us like settled because I feel like sometimes when you're in a room especially if you're in a room with people that like you're not as comfortable with then like it can get a little awkward and you know someone is like fighting for an idea that like (laughs) you don't really like but you're just kind of like yeah sure let's do that it's fine you know yeah and like that didn't happen it was like oh this is your idea. This is my idea. How can we make them both work? Yeah, and I didn't I didn't even quite remember that we had done that until I was tracking vocals myself when you guys sent me the newer version. And I was tracking and just trying to sing along and I was like, "Oh yeah, this this pre is different." <laughs> and it kind of like all came back to me and I just I love that we kept that. I love we did that. Yeah. Well, it, it, I'm glad that we did have the voice memos because I think the downside of recording at like 3 a.m. is that I, I could barely remember the session like until exactly. I was sort of coaxed. Because, you are you know, when you're so tired, you know, it's hard to like whatever hard drive has to write that memory in your brain is just like working at half speed. I like the good or bad, but like, the, I don't know. It's like the phrase of it. Yeah. Like, like it's not enough syllables. Yeah. Something different. Mm-hmm. Like you're acting. It's something different. Yeah. Is something different? Is it good or bad? Something different. Is it good or bad? What about if we say, like, it's something different when you look at me? Something different in the way you I don't want to know. We could start a chain reaction. Like something, something. It's a chain reaction. Yeah. Mm, it's exactly where this leads. Yeah. There's something different in the way you're acting. Something special when you look at me. Special. Because it's like supposed to be like yeah. the initiation. I'm like, you only have a What's different? something subtle? Something subtle. That's cool. Oh, I like that. Something it's like subtle a, when you look at me. I've been, I've been scared to start a chain reaction. Yeah. I've been scared to start a chain reaction. Yeah. Not knowing what, not knowing where it leads. Never knowing where it leads. Never, never knowing where it leads. One of the things I'm really curious about for you is, is like, where were you coming from, kind of lyrically and conceptually, because. You know, looking back on it, like you know, late 2018, I I, I hadn't really seen anybody in a while. Like it wasn't really like I wasn't really in like a, a breakup mode. I also wasn't in a relationship mode. But and so in a lot of ways, I feel like the song was kind of free from baggage for me personally. Like if anything, it was sort of more of like putting out into the universe like what I I wanted out of a relationship, which was mm-hmm. like to not kind of like lose my head and go crazy. Or like run away from it, you know, like it was just more, it was less like I was directly writing about somebody and more just sort of the, con- like a concept of a kind of hope for whatever the next thing would be. But I'm curious like where it came from for both of you. Yeah. Because you guys were both in relationships when we were writing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for me, like in relationships, I've always had a hard time committing or like I've always had kind of like a fear of commitment probably just from having grown up with an addict father that was like in and out of the picture so I just didn't really know what that looked like and I had finally gotten myself into a situation where I felt like I really could show up for this other person in the ways that like my dad was unable to show up for me I guess that's kind of where I was coming from is just like oh, like I'm I'm in the place where like I want to be a better person for this other person that I care about instead of just like just coasting in the way that I had been previously. Think about like young love, like we dove in, yeah. you know, like, and it's like- Trying to like not just like do go that. ahead first. Like, you yeah. just want to do that because it like feels so good. And like, it's the same thing with anything in excess, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it's like, when you're young, like you're starting to realize that. And I feel like when you get to the point where like- You, you get a little older, you can be patient or like at least just sort of like see your 
like the clarity of it. Yeah, and when you have like a real life to live and like bills to pay, it's like you need balance, like more than you ever thought you did when mm. you were young. Yeah, and, and likewise, I feel like I feel like one of the things that really uh, hit me squarely over the head in the summer of 2018 was how much of an all or nothing kind of person I am, like how, how much my tendency is to completely immerse myself in one thing to the exclusion of all other things, be that like a work project or be that personal relationships. And I feel like I had really started to run up against some of the the damaging consequences of, of, of that personality trait. The one sort of like, it's not even, it wasn't really a fight, it was just sort of like a, a tension we had to work through while I was in Boston. It was like, Nate was just like, you're really an all or nothing kind of person. And I was in this relationship that was approaching, that had just passed a year uh, and was about to enter another phase of long distance. And I was moving to LA, starting this new chapter of my life, like, but still really wanting to hold on to this, this thing that I had built uh, over the summer and this thing that I put a lot of energy and made a lot of mistakes and, and lost a lot of, or just, yeah, just something that had taken me through so many phases of myself already. And then coming into this new phase of my life, being like, I see how hard it can be to like stay stable with someone and within myself and all I like, especially with the uncertainty of being like, I'm in, I'm finally in this new, new place. I'm finally out of school. Like so much of my life is uncertain. Like what I really want is some semblance of, of normalcy, partially for myself, but partially for this person that I'm in a relationship with, because at the end of the day, like, I don't want to be all over the place. I don't want to be making mistakes. I don't want to be fighting. Like I just want to feel that sense of balance. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think it's interesting wanting to be more balanced, like because of another person being in the picture, because like if, if you were by yourself, maybe you just wouldn't have the will to like the will enough to care, or at least for me, that's like, if I don't have something like driving me, like it's easy for me to just kind of like fall off, like into the extremes. So like having having a person there to kind of like keep you in check is very helpful. <laughs> but yeah. now I'm looking back on the way that I had felt because I'm no longer in a relationship. And it's interesting because I'm like, I don't know if that mentality is actually healthy. <laughs> I always felt like relationships for me were this kind of like threshold. It takes me just a little bit more time than your average person to like be really comfortable in a relationship. Like to say like, this is a capital R relationship that like I want to see out. Mm -hmm. But then like once I pass that threshold, I am like all in, which is very much like an all or nothing kind of thing. And because of that, I've either had relationships that I nope out of because it takes me like too long to figure it out. Or I have relationships that I make up my mind, I'm in, but it's just a bit too, like too much happening, like kind of too quickly from the other side because th they weren't there for my whole sort of internal, you know, monologue of, is this the right thing for me? Oh yes, cool. I'm going to get married now. Um, <laughs> which is why I think actually my favorite line, and I think the one for me that, that resonated the most like autobiographically was while I was making up my mind about this, I figured you would stick around. While I was making up my mind about this, I figured you would stick around. Mm. Because mm -hmm. I feel like my, my last serious relationship around that time of writing it ended because I just took way too long to like actually make a decision as to whether or not this was like a casual or a serious thing. And that's a lot to ask somebody to sort of be like, to like expect somebody to like stick around while you're trying to like make up your mind about whether or not you actually even want to be there. Mm -hmm. And it's so that line, that line always like really stuck with me and always kind of like twisted the knife. Yeah. Is there a line that stood out for either of you? I think for me, it was, it was, it was starting the second verse. Like, I really wish we wouldn't fight about this. It's just like that, that raw desperation of like, and and consequently the follow up like I always thought you were my solid ground. Really wish we wouldn't fight about this. Always thought you were my solid ground. What what I like about the song is it's really hopeful and and really like earnest in in wanting things to be okay, but it's clear from the lyrical content that things are not necessarily okay. Mm -hmm. Like you're clearly all over the place and the relationship has issues, which, you know, that that's sort of where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. Like a place of like really wanting things to be good and seeing the good, but also like recognizing the bad and being like, why does it have to be this way? Is it me or is it you? That's why I think I always felt sort of connected to the song in a kind of way. 
Yeah, totally. That line always reminded me of quicksand. You know, it's like thought you were my solid ground. Like you're standing on something that looks fine and then you're all of a sudden sinking. You know, there's something like that almost feels like a betrayal in that line. Like I I thought this was going to be a lot easier than it wound up being. Like and a lot more stable than it wound up being. Is there a line that stood out for you? For me, I'm just like a very extreme person. And that's like why I needed the balance and like why I was searching for it in somebody else. Because mm-hmm. like on my own, it's just like, I can't find normal. Yeah, it's like the all or nothing thing. And so like the, the pre, the dive head first and fall right into something or turn around and run the other way instead. Well, I dive head first and fall right into something. I turn around and run the other way instead. That's totally me. Mm. yeah it's just so interesting like looking back now and like not being in a relationship because I'm like I think at the time I felt like the song like you were saying Noah like it's obvious from listening to the song that like there's something off about the relationship but like at the time when I was writing it I was like oh yeah but like I'm trying to be better like for this person instead of like I'm trying to be better for myself like Mm. yeah for the, the the value of like for my own intrinsic value and like what that really looks like. It's like a self journey song that you discover through your relationship. Yeah. So it's not necessarily about love. It's about like a person's like own journey and like learning who they are and like learning their weaknesses and strengths, you know? And yeah. it's like that comes out in a relationship, but it's not about if you love them or not, or if like, you're in this thing or like yeah. meant to be or something like that. It's not like about your relationship and like the love you share. It's about like practicality and like, yeah. am yeah. I the type of person that like can make this work? Because I think for me back then, I was like, oh, well, I am a good and valuable person if my partner feels that way. What's so interesting about the song, and I think the reason why it just has continued to haunt us in the way that it has to the point of like, you know, bring, bringing it in, in a sense sort of back to life. Like the reason why it, it haunted me was because despite writing this song about what I wanted out of a, a relationship or like what I kind of hoped for myself in a relationship about not being this kind of person. The next serious relationship I was in, I flew out to Chicago after knowing her for like a week and a half. <laughs> like I'm definitely still this kind of person. And I think it's like a longer journey to like level yourself out just a little bit. And, you know, the line is try to level out for you because I could use some balance too. It, it shows kind of both sides, which is like, on the one hand, this person wants you to be a stable thing. On the other hand, you need to be stable for yourself. Like you mm-hmm. need to want that balance. Like, so I'm not here. Yeah. There's something that like has its own internal symmetry. So yeah. yeah. Like a two-liner. Yeah, like a two-liner. I, there, I want it to be like even. Like I want to do something to, to be, to be. Yeah. What if it's something like I could use some balance too? Like that's the second line of the couplet. Yeah, like like I promised, babe, I'll try for you because I could use some balance too. Yeah. Like what about try to level out for you? Oh, I like that. Try to level out for you. So I could use some balance too. Yeah. But I think that's also why, while we were working on the sort of new version. Originally, it was just ending on the post chorus, but we have this outro that's like really distant and faded. I love, like, I think it, it came because Noah just played the exhale patch alone, mm. like, and it sounded really pretty. But I remember just sort of like singing, even just like off time, like, uh, I could use some balance too, because ending in this sort of like frayed, kind of like distant way, I think implies that like this is not the solution. This is. This is the moment you admit the problem, but like the rest is still like, there's so much more work to be done. And that's why I kind of like ending it on that kind of like um, a bit more kind of frayed out note than ending it on the big sort of triumphant moment, you know? Totally. Because it just kind of establishes that like tension that never quite went away. Even even when it opens up into this kind of like tri- triumphant, like hopeful thing, like there's still this like unsolved energy that's there. Mm. It's like when you when you like make up in a fight like in the evening and you know you have not addressed any of the problems, 
but you are just sort of putting it aside. Like it's, you know, yeah, you're like you just want to go to bed. Yeah. Like you're having a great, you know, you're having like a nice night. Like maybe you're watching a movie or whatever. Like the triumph is that you're not fighting anymore, but that's a, that's a hollow victory because you have not actually addressed the root of the problem yet. You've yeah. just, you've just called it what it is. Yeah. And like, you know, resolved that like specific thing. I'm curious what inspired you. Cause it wasn't just like, you know, you were like, Hey, like, remember that song we did? Like maybe we can, you know, give it another shot. Like you actually sent me a whole version yeah. of the song. Like you reproduced it. Yeah. It, you, you sang it, you changed the key. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's one of those songs that you, you were mentioning, like, you know, Nate and I've done a lot of sessions over the last two years. Like this was one of the first, but for whatever reason, something about that song and like, it, it's interesting to look back on it and look back on the energy of the session. Cause it felt, you know, somewhat special. And I think there's something to be said for that. Cause despite all of the songs that I've written over the last few years, that song was always echoing in the back of my head. It never really went away. Mm. Like it kept coming back into my brain and I kept being like, I really liked that session. I really liked this song. And the more and the more I was just like, especially when, when you were going through all your stuff with Pendulum, I'm like, yeah, I don't think Miette's probably not going to put this out, but like there's, there's still something that like really resonates with me about the song. And it was actually uh, the evening that I was working on one of our singles, Casper, I was just like in a good flow and I'm just like, you know what? I'm just like, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm just going to like open up balance and just see if I can do a version. I was and in I, New York at the time, wasn't I? Yeah. For like Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was like the first time I'd gotten alone in this house in God knows how long, like Meg was out doing something and I was just alone in the studio. I'd been working on other music for a couple hours and I was just kind of like, like still riding that high. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, cause I, a couple, a couple of weeks before that I had, pl- I had played it on guitar. And I was just like, yeah, the song just like feels really good to sing and really good to play. And I'm like, I kind of want to just, I, I want to sing it and see if I sound good singing it. Cause I'm just like, you sound so amazing on that demo. And I'd always, that's all, also part of why I liked it so much. Well, you know, I always said it's all or nothing. Mm-hmm. You got a problem with the way I lose my head. I'm just like Miet fucking killed this like all these like little ad libs in between and it's just like oh, a yeah. really like it just reminded me of everything I like about like Kevin Garrett and a lot of that sort of like alt R&B music mm. that I was like super into when we were starting Sleeping Lion it's just like really cool I'm just like yeah like that's a really cool I really like the way the melody it's like really folky but it has this like R&B thing to it and I like I just want to see if I can pull it off and I like opened up the session found a key that sort of worked well, I thought I first and and then like tweaked the bits and then and then recorded it and then listened back and I and I was like yeah that's actually not that cool and I kind of was like yeah I, I didn't really that didn't really land for me in the way I wanted it to and then I like didn't think about it for well, a really long time. And you didn't time. even send it to yeah, me. Yeah, didn't like, even that send was, it to you because I, I, like, made, I just made Casper, which I was really excited about. And I was like, all right, well, this is really cool. Balance isn't quite there yet. So I'm just going to like, I'm just going to call that a bust and be like, well, yeah, maybe the song just isn't meant to be. Which, which is which is funny. Like I was, like I said, I was, in, I was in New York. At this point, it's a year after the balance, the original balance session. Noah makes it, doesn't send it to me. And then just on a whim, you send it to me like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, it was in, in January uh, after a, a whirlwind of 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 my life and a bunch of things kind of fell apart pretty catastrophically. I was uh, my mom came to visit and the song popped back into my head for whatever reason because there was a million things going on in my head in that re- in, in that period and I like was just listening to the demo and I was like, okay, it's not like it's not great. Like there's some there's still some stuff that could be worked on about it. But I'm like, I'm going to see what Nate thinks. Like I'm, let me let me send this to Nate and see if he hears what I'm hearing and hears that it could actually work for us. And I I was absolutely floored. Like I think I sent I think I sent it to you like like that demo to you as well, just being like, "Oh, like Noah did a version." I I didn't know. I just found out. I think my big my biggest sort of note was it was a four minute and thirty second yeah. demo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what um, was like, in there? The, well, there was there was a whole like bridge where when we originally were doing it, you like did this like improv bridge. We repeated the pre-chorus twice and then went into a third chorus. I could use some balance too. You got a problem with the way I lose my. Ooh, you've been looking for 
balance. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a whole thing, but yeah, I was hearing it. And I was just like, oh, I think it works in a shorter space. Also, I think it was in that demo that you sort of were like ad libbing, and you sort of had like something that was adjacent to like oh, oh yeah. Da, 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 da. It was it, something like it was that. something that went like a little bit lower. Oh, 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 balance, yeah. But you know that was that was in the back of my head, and then the coronavirus stuff started happening, and it was that song that kind of inspired this like different plans idea of like, wow, what if we go back and like take these songs that like we didn't necessarily know what to do with, and now like give it give it light, let it see the light of day, like give it you know the time and attention that it needs, and part of that was like we sat down, and we were like, well, is there are there things that we can add to it that make it sound just bigger and just much more powerful than like our demos. And that was when like it occurred to me like, oh, our friend Jacob Herlick from school who I grew up with, you know, he's just coming. He, he broke both of his heels. He just come back from New York because he had been there for like five months recovering from breaking both his heels. Wow. And so, and all of a sudden, like he comes back expecting to play drums on all these shows and then all these shows get canceled because of Corona. So we're like, well, you know, on the one hand, it would be sick to have drums on this song. On the other hand, like we get to like give our friends some money to do what he loves and what he, you know, has not been able to do since coming back. And so we, you know, we had Jacob on, that sounded awesome. And we're like, well, what about horns? <laughs> and I, I called, do you remember Scott Bell? Yeah, from- he was your roommate. Yeah, my freshman year roommate. Uh, he played, he, and he's played trumpet on other stuff. He played trumpet on good, and he but can yeah, he sing played, too, huh? Yeah, he was in um, pitch slap. Yeah, yeah. He he was a bass. He's got a very mm. like beautiful low voice and perfect pitch. Well, yeah, he just absolutely crushed this trumpet part, and all of a sudden it became this like big song. <laughs> felt just like so huge, you know? And it was nice just like have like getting your vocals back and just hearing us together, like finally hearing like this whole whole thing kind of culminate. Um what what were your thoughts? And I know we just sort of rambled for for a while about like this sort of like behind the scenes process, but what were your thoughts sort of seeing it like every kind of fifth frame? Like what was your thoughts about the song kind of like coming back and hearing each sort of subsequent demo? Yeah. So The first thing that I really noticed was like the acoustic guitar. And it just made me feel so nostalgic to our first tour. Yeah. And it just made me think about you making folk music And then, you know, starting Sleeping Lion. And I love that you, Noah, you mentioned how it felt kind of Kevin y um, (laughs) when you listened back to it. And it's just like, it's interesting because it's like, I have known you both for a long time and, and heard some of the very early Sleeping Lion stuff and also, you know, heard a ton of Nate's folk stuff before he started making electronic music it makes total sense that like I wrote that song with you guys and then you kind of went to a rootsy place and I think like this is probably the folkiest thing you guys have and I know you've been kind of going more in that direction recently and we talked about that a bit when I saw you last but yeah I just I noticed the the guitar and it made me think about like Phoebe Bridgers and like Elliot Smith. And I just thought that was really cool. I think we had, we had to go all the way out, I think, to come back. Like I think that we had to like really go down the electronic route and get excited and then sick of straight like electronic production to be comfortable to sort of come back to like what we knew best, which is I think like the folk elements. Not to mention that I feel like um, I've been obsessed with like Lake House by Jeremy Zucker. Mm. I feel like I what what I love about that record is that there's so much like great production in it, but there's also a lot of organic elements. And I think it was you know you were you were saying like when when you were explaining it, but also I remember you showing me that like 
I remember being in the studio and you playing balance on the guitar mm. kind of before we dive like dove into re, redoing the production. You're like, this just sounds really nice. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, like it, it has. And we've been doing like the live stream shows through this, you know, through through the the virus times. And balance is one of my favorite songs to play in the live because it sounds so good acoustically. And I think that's a testament to you. And I think also just like a testament to where we all kind of came from. Because when we went on tour, we went on a folk tour. Like it was just us and our guitars, you know, and keyboards just like playing songs that had to work in an acoustic space. Yeah. And I started as a folk artist too. Yeah. And that's what's really cool is just like, we've known each other since the beginning of our musical careers. And now years later, the first collaboration we're releasing together has that rooty feeling. It's a culmination of of our friendship. It is a culmination of like both our roots and also where we've wound up as artists. Because there there's the electronic side. There's a little bit of that like I was I think what was important with us to have live drums too was to have to capture that sort of like gritty percussion that like permeates through enough. Mm. You know, permeates through like pendulum. Like having like elements of these sort of or, like organic things things that become a part of your sound and also just like tapping into like the immense amount of talent that has become sort of our friend circle. So, you know, on the one side with the podcast, like I met Finn who's doing all the art for Talking Lion on our tour, mm-hmm. a friend of yours from Colorado. Yeah. And she, she's amazing. Your friend did the like photograph for the cover art. Mm. Yep. Because, we, you know, we can't, We can't like do a shoot together because we're in quarantine and everything. Well, and I think it's amazing that you chose her photo because she shot the cover of Spring and the cover of Release Me. I see. I didn't know that, but that tracks. I mean, I I think there's something really cool about her her art. I was I was looking at other other pictures too, and there's just something really like I don't know. I, I always loved photos that kind of suggested more than was like in the frame. Yeah. And I think there's something cool about that photo. For anyone that wants to see her work, her handle is Pony Girl. And her name is Robin Walsh. She's an amazing artist and photographer. Yeah, shout out. And thank you for letting us use and and sort of remix the cover for for this song. And then, you know, of course, like there's there's Jacob Herlick, who, who I grew up with, who went to school with us. And Scott, who was like a part of our freshman year experience. And then mixed by... Michael Panic from Transviolet, who we listened to back when we were in college and, yeah. and, you know, befriended out here and mastered by our roommate, Eric. So it's just like a whole, a whole like kind of family that has evolved mm. over the course of six years, just sort of coming together on, on the song. And that's at the end of the day, I, I just, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like the song took, the song needed to, the song took six years in, in a sense, you know, it took all of us kind of growing up and like, and, and, be, and meeting these people and letting these songs mean something to us. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think if we had just cut it or like whatever, when we wrote in 2018, it wouldn't be the song it is now. No, it would have been this like weird little electronic thing. Yeah. This like pseudo, this four minute and 30 seconds yeah. pseudo R and B piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I liked the song when we first wrote it, but yeah, I just didn't, um, it was just one of those, one of those songs where you just don't know where its home is. <laughs> yeah. Or what it could be, you know, with like a little bit of love and time. Exactly. And that's the hard thing about doing these writing trips is that like, you know, we won't get to have a follow up session until, you know, maybe months from when we write it. If we do decide we want to go in for edits or, you know, building, building it out or whatever it may be, we weren't able to like get back in and and revisit it. And so I'm glad that you, you guys did that. (laughs) Was there anything that stood out to you in the production or in the sort of new version, like any kind of detail that you want the, like a listener to, to sort of grasp onto? The second chorus, I love the variation that we did. And like, there's so many layers that it just feels like it's getting so big, but it's just, it's just a slight variation in the melody. It's like, um, when we go up, when we say, but I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, that's another thing that I'm pretty sure you just improv in the original demo. Like the, the, there's so much just like, because we hadn't like 
ironed home like all the melodies. There's there's so much freedom to how you sang that original demo that I think still informed a lot of it. It just make, it just kind of like picks it up and brings it home. <laughs> Is there a detail that you uh, or like a sound design piece of the story? Um, I'm trying to th- the, the last like puzzle piece that because I remember in the original demo you had just because it, there was a lot of space in the recording you had all these like little ad libs. And I always loved all the ad-libs. And I feel like slowly as the song developed, we ended up with less, less and less of the original ad-lib take from the very original demo. But there was still one piece in the second pre-chorus, the second time, right at the end of the, of the production process. And I was like, there's still, there could still be something. I was like trying to open up a synth or like find something to like fill that space. And then I went back on your original vocal take, which is still in the session. Your your voice pitched down five semitones is actually like one of the layers. Oh, like, cool. In the song. I was wondering about that little part that, yeah, I know exactly what and, you're talking about. And there's a bunch of there's a bunch of different improvs which I tried to keep in, but the the, the last one that made it in was like you just went like it just is it was one like little uh one little ad lib that uh I'd sort of forgotten about and then saw that the audio was still there, just like super, super quiet. And then I turned it up and I was like, Oh, that's actually really cool. And then I added like a couple different octaves of it. And that was like the final like piece of the puzzle in the song that was like, okay, now like there's officially enough ear candy. Every hole has been filled like this. There's enough like, like melodic information to like carry the, carry the song. And I think, I think it's, it's cool that it was like something from the, you know, from the day, from the original session was just like something that you did sort of as a throwaway, but like it was, you know, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Cause I, I heard that little part and I was like, oh, that's such an interesting little like thing there. Like, I wonder how that came about. So that's cool. I didn't realize that it was, like, from the original demo. Yeah. I think uh, the thing that I, like, had the hardest time kind of solving in my head was in the pre's because there's a lot of space yeah. between each line that we didn't want to, like, overwrite, but there, I, it felt like each space needed to sort of justify itself with some sort of interesting piece of sound design that kept it going. And in some, it's, like, the piano line, which is really cool. And in some, it's like the ad libs. But in the first pre specifically, there was just this one space that I felt like really needed to be filled with something just like weird and like vaguely vocal. And I'm obsessed with Adore You by Harry Styles. Mm. And I love that throughout that song, there is just this riser of him just like essentially yelling. And so I was like, what if we just did that? And I yelled into the mic and Noah Noah made that the sort of riser. Yeah, they're like, ah. It's like, oh, it's like this like, wow. sweeping sound. It's literally me going, ah! I love that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's funny. Like I, Each little piece of a song like has a story. I hope that like anybody listening like kind of gets that that's like a thing. That, you know, it's not like, oh, we have this idea like from the onset. It's that like songs are this evolving thing and each little piece of sound design tends to, or or line or, you know, idea tends to have like a kind of like story behind it. Uh, which is why I, I appreciate you, uh, you you doing this with us, and not just the song, but 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 talking to us about about the song and about yeah. what this process is. We have um, a question from our Patreon patron. His name is Alan C, and he is wondering for all of us a question about our live show, which obviously is a bit of a, a loaded question considering it'll be a while until we actually get to do that. But he was wondering if there was any instrument that like we wish we could have on stage or play ourselves, we think would sort of enhance like a live show. I know you have more of a band than we do when we play live. But honestly, like if the, if the question is a blue sky question, for me, it's obvious. Like I want just like a full fucking orchestra. Yeah. Like it'd be so cool to just have like a full string section and a full horn section. Yeah. In, you know, in a live show. And barring that, just like either a fantastic cello player or a really great mandolin player. Mm, that'd like, be like a, I would love to play a show with Chris Steely. Yeah, that would be crazy. What about for you? You took it out of my mouth. I I was definitely thinking cello, especially because there's like so many things you can do with pedals these days mm. and strings. So it'd be cool to do like a cello with like a pickup. Yeah. And like do like have looping or, or like some kind of electronic situation with the cello. Yeah, I would say like, if it's just one instrument, it's hard because it's like it'd be cool to have a horn section sometimes. Um, yeah. yeah, that's what that's why I think the trumpet on this song is really cool. Did you ever uh, listen to Beirut? Like yes, we, well, I think the thing that I love the most about how the, how the drums and the trumpet sort of blend in the song is that it reminds me of like Nantes or Nantes. Yeah, or I know, I know what song you're talking Nantes. about. Nantes. I, I always, yeah, I, I just love how like those 
trumpets and like drums sort of yeah and yeah. specifically the flugelhorn what i like what i appreciate about scott is he went over all of his parts with the flugelhorn as well which is what and the guy mute. yeah and, and a mute on some of it but oh, okay. like the flugelhorn is what the guy from beirut primarily plays so yeah. it's got that it's got a softer kind of edge to it which i think blends really well with like acoustic guitar so like i'm really like happy that we got that texture i think if i had to pick one instrument i wish i played i, th- I thought this thought about this a lot <laughs> for a while with saxophone or like cello i think I think I would do really well as a trumpet player. Like I, I actually took trumpet lessons for a little bit. So I have like a little bit of precedent, but I feel like if I could just be like Chet Baker and just like <laughs> go up to the microphone and sing really soft and sad and then like take a trumpet solo, like that would just be, let's hear your, that would be sick. Let's hear your best uh, trumpet pucker. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Yeah. I played clarinet. Ooh. That's such a nice instrument too. It was like, under, underrated, I think. I feel like sampling clarinets too is just like, whew. Yeah, yeah, Andy Schaff has a lot of clarinet oh, yeah. on his Yo, stuff. Yo, Andy Schaff is amazing. Love him. Yeah, well, the song is out now, so I hope anybody listening to this, now that you know the story, if you haven't heard it, listen to Balance. It's on all streaming platforms. And if you have heard it, I hope you enjoy some of these stories because this song clearly means a lot to us. I think it it represents something really special. And thank you, Miet, for joining us uh, for the second time on Talking Lion. Yeah, and thank you for, for having me. Being a great yeah. friend over the course of, of the last six years. Aw, you too. You've been looking for balance. You've been looking for something stable. And I've been making my habits to try to level out for you because I can use some balance too. Oh, 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 We would like to thank Alan C. for supporting Talking Lion on Patreon and Isotope.